Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up on Roku or in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, right now, if I were to ask most people who they thought was the best fighter at 160 or 168 out of Mexico right now, many would say Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And let me just say, Junior is interesting because, quite frankly, as good as he is right now, and he's an excellent inside boxer and he has a big punch, right? As Sergio Martinez knows well, as good as Junior is right now, I think Junior has actually regressed a bit. The Chavez Junior who I liked the most was the Chavez Jr. who at times fought on his back foot and flash hand speed against John Duddy. But be that as it may, there's an outcry right now for Jr. to fight people like Andre Ward at 168 pounds and also, right, at 160 pounds, there's an outcry for him to fight Janady Golovkin. Now, what if I told you that in my opinion, and it's non-mainstream, Junior's not even the best out of Mexico at 168 pounds. In my opinion, the best guy out of Mexico, in fact, I believe this guy's an uncrowned champion. I think he's a guy who eventually will get a belt at 168. I believe the best guy at 168 out of Mexico, world-class fighter, is Marco Antonio Paraben. Now one of the things I love about boxing is when you stumble upon a superstar fighter, a guy who has all kinds of talent, and yet nobody seems to realize it. He's not getting the big press, right? In fact, folks, I'll be as blunt as I can be. He's coming off of a loss. Right? He lost in his championship attempt against Sakio Bika, but people need to understand that Bika is one of boxing's more underrated fighters and hardest matchups. Right? What Paribin brings to the table is a multiplicity of skills. He is a guy who can adapt to whatever you're doing. And let me also be blunt here. Right, I'm giving you the downside as well as the upside. This is a guy who has had some tough moments in the ring and in my opinion is very mentally tough. Right, He was fighting a guy named Gerardo Diaz. He actually gets dropped early in the fight. Right, First or second round. He gets off the canvas. Many fighters, quite frankly, would panic at that moment. Not this guy. His personality is such that he gets off the canvas with a sneer on his face. Right? In other words, he's so of the belief that he is a great fighter that when he gets knocked down and he gets up, the attitude is, okay, I slipped up right there. It's not going to happen again in this fight. Right? He went on to get the second round knockout in that fight. Let me tell you, against Saki Obika, he came in and, in my opinion, he had the better skill set than Saki Obika. But Bika is one of these outlier mid-range brawlers, right? Who, quite frankly, turned what, if it were a technical fight, would have gone in Paribin's favor. He turned it into a brawl. And even though Parabin held his own, one of the judges had it a draw, Parabin easily could have won the title, right, with the same fight. It just came down to the judges. Even though Parabin held his own, he couldn't handle the mugging style of Sakio Bika. In other words, Sakio 
you know, literally got this fight out of the technical range into the, um, you know, I'm throwing hooks in bunches at the end of rounds to try to steal rounds range, and Parabin lost the fight on those grounds, right? Don't be fooled. Even though he's coming off of a loss, and even though he doesn't have the big family name of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., this guy's an elite fighter. I'd take him to beat Chavez Jr., Quite frankly, I'm not sure who I would take if he were to fight Sakio Bika a second time because I get the feeling he'd be more prepared for Bika, right? He's the kind of fighter who, quite frankly, if it were announced that he were going to fight Carl Frotch, I'd have to sit and think about it and look at a lot of film. I'm not sure who I would take in that fight. Well, I'm talking him up because he's about to have another big litmus test. How big? His opponent is unbeaten. How big? His opponent trains at the Mayweather gym. How big? His opponent is trained by Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, right? The trainer of Chad Dawson. How big? The last time I saw his opponent, whose name is Badu Jack, enter the ring, he walked in the ring with former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. In other words, there's a lot of money, a lot of connected people behind Paraben's opponent, Badu Jack, right? As I said, Badu Jack is unbeaten and carries a big punch. The bet I'm recommending in this fight is to swim against public opinion I like Marco Antonio Parabin in this fight. I've not been able to see posted odds on this fight. But let's just say, in my opinion, while Jack has a big punch, while Jack has a lot of things working for him, he fights out of a shell, he's very structured. I don't believe unbeaten Badu Jack is ready for Marco Antonio Parabin, who quite frankly, is championship caliber, right? I'm expecting Parabin to move much better than Badu Jack, who I believe has a problem with movement. Badu Jack fought a fighter, Alexander Brand. And I know Brand's very good. I know the boxing hardcore is saying that's the only fight in his career Brand lost. Fair enough. Right, But Alexander Brand, at 35 years old, showed some lateral movement to Badu Jack. And in my opinion, Badu Jack, who won the fight by split decision, was lucky to come away with the nod. He seemed lost as Alexander Brand moved around the ring. Right? He seemed lost. He seemed to me to be following him around the ring like a little puppy follows its owner around the ring. Now, there were times when, you know, Alexander Brand stopped moving and Badu Jack was able to come up to him and start landing big punches. But those moments were few and far between. More importantly, Alexander Brand succeeded in dramatically dropping Badu Jack's volume, right? Badu Jack's one of these guys who looks at you move and doesn't throw punches, right? You can literally slow him down with lateral movement. I believe that's the key. If you are fighting in a phone booth, Badu Jack is great. But if you're moving around the ring and you can keep your defense together while you do it, Badu Jack, in my opinion, gives up everything. Even though he has foot speed, he doesn't have foot speed when his opponent's moving, right? He tends to be a deer caught in headlights. I think that's the secret to this fight, because understand Parabin, who can actually play chess in the trenches, can also move behind a very stiff jab and be a combination puncher. 
Right Perryman, in many ways, reminds me of Andre Ward. In other words, you look at him in different fights, and he looks like a different fighter. Right? He's a boxing multilinguist. Against Badu Jack, I believe he's going to move like he did against Bika. Only he's going to find that his opponent isn't the brawler that Bika is. Let me point out, too, that Parabin has taken on other high-profile opponents. He's already beaten a highly thought-of fighter out of the Mayweather gym at the time, a guy named Dion Savage. And he did it by early knockout. Understand, too, Parabin is one of these guys who you look at him, you may not have heard too much about him. But then when you look through his record, you start to see some names and you say, whoa, wait a moment, this guy fought Dion Savage? You know, then you realize you're dealing with a guy who is the consummate boxing professional. He's fighting the tough fights. They're just not ending up on HBO or Showtime. I think this guy is a guy to watch. I think this fight against an unbeaten opponent is going to be his coming out party. Simply put, I think this guy is better than Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I like Marco Antonio Parabin in this fight. I think he's a guy you need to keep an eye on. I think he could be a major player at 168. Let me go further in talking about 168 pounds. <laughs> you know what? With all the big names at 168, let's throw out some of them. Carl Frotch. I believe after Frotch's next fight, George Groves. <laughs> right? uh, Andre Ward. Right? Mikael Kessler. Just keep in mind that two names that you need to think about because these guys are both better than advertised even though both of them have losses are James DeGale and Marco Antonio Parabin right the way to beat the casino in my opinion is to figure out the lay of the land before talented guys get their big opportunity, right? I'm just telling you, I believe Marco Antonio Parabin is ready for his big opportunity. I'm expecting him to beat Mayweather fighter, in fact, unbeaten Mayweather fighter, Badu Jack. The fight is on the 12th. I hope you give it a look. I think this guy is a talent. I'm hoping I don't have to make a post-fight video where I'm eating crow and wiping the egg off my face. I like Marco Antonio Parabin in this fight. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.